Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's the Bald Bearded Bicyclist, and this is another race recap for you. This is the two days of Buffalo plan to peak uh, series, and it's actually going to be a, uh, it's really three events. Um, I didn't record the TT because uh, it'd probably be boring just watching me go around in basically a circle by myself. But we've got the crit here, and we will have the road race coming out for you soon, so make sure you're subscribed to catch that. This is uh, sponsored by Plant Peak Endurance Sport Coaching, Tom's Pro Bike, Canberra, and it's put on by the East Aurora Racing Club. Uh, so this is a really fun one. Uh, brings a lot of out-of-towners, and uh, it'll be a good one for you. But I do apologize. The camera settings were a little funky on this day, so the front camera is very shaky. Uh, bear with me, the uh, road race will be nice and smooth. Uh, but it does actually make it look like we're going a lot faster, which I think a lot of the stabilization, you lose a lot of the speed. So I don't mind the fact that you actually can kind of feel the speed uh, with this setup. But um, basically jumping into it, um, we it's a it's a circular track. We you know pick up some speeds here and there, but uh, it's really not technical at all. And uh, no one really wanted to push the pace today, so. Uh, there was a couple of small attacks, uh, and I'll, I'll show those, but uh, for the most part, everybody was just kind of hanging in, waiting for the sprint. There was, a, I would say, one attack, and then, you know, there was a preem lap, which, which pushed everybody on that lap, but uh, it was also, this weekend was extremely hot, so that did absolutely play a factor. Um, it was probably 90 degrees on both days. Um, there's multiple times where we're going around uh, this loop and there's a section where there's a little bit of shade from the trees and that was usually a topic of discussion on every lap uh, just being able to get that that rice bit for uh, for a couple of seconds um, but I'm just kind of hanging in here um, looking for an opportunity to move up um, I'm doing maybe a little bit more work than I should because I'm not quite drafting but um, a lot of today's tactics for me kind of went back to the fact that I crashed in this race the year before it was a different scenario and maybe I shouldn't have focused too much on that but uh, there were 64 or something people in the in the race last year a lot of inexperienced riders so there were crashes all over the place and so in my head I was just thinking I really want to stay near the front um, I don't want to get caught up in a crash so you know I, I put in a little bit of work just to get up um, on somebody to draft and uh, I kind of resigned myself to doing a little bit more work today just to stay near the front and not have to worry so much about the possibility of crashes if they happen at the back so that was kind of my plan and uh, for the most part it worked out for the majority of the day um, and then uh, at the end you know maybe it wasn't the best option but uh, I'll jump ahead a little bit and actually get into some of the action. So here we are coming around the backside on the second lap and uh, Greg in the Flamingo kit um, decides to go off the front here and uh, people just don't really want to follow him but it does bring the pace up a little bit. So that was really the first time. I mean, I think before this, even sitting on the front, we were probably doing 200 watts, uh, maybe less. Um, I believe it's the team IBCC right on the front you can see the, the blue bike and they have blue kits there's two of these guys and they did a ton of work um, in both races they uh, were sitting on the front and um, and we weren't keeping the pace super high but uh, being on the front they were do definitely doing more work than everybody else so um, props to those guys for uh, for really keeping the, the race moving and uh, I feel like the rest of the pack would have just resigned to sit at like 16 miles per hour and uh, nobody wanted to, to make poles other than them. So um, they were definitely uh, keeping us somewhat motivated. But uh, we kind of just let, let Greg dangle um, a little bit. And like I said, we, we did pick up the speed um, slightly and uh, the speed naturally picks up on this back section going into the straight as there's uh, wind at our basically our backs and it's tiny tiny bit downhill uh, plus I think uh, people get a little bit amped um, 
going through or the stages and where people are watching so they always kind of tend to pick up the pace a little bit but you can sense can see it's a it's a negative one percent grade it's i mean it's a pretty flat course but uh it does uh, pick up the speeds a little bit and uh would always feel good when you pick up the speed because you're getting a little bit more wind and on a hot day like this uh, makes it <laughs> feel a little bit nicer this turn was where a lot of people crashed years before because they just don't i mean it's a circular course you don't really think of it as turns and people just wouldn't lean their bike at all and then would push people off into the dirt on the right side so um so i was consistently trying to stay to the left side so that wouldn't be an issue for me um, and again I you know it's just that whole crash last year was just playing in my mind a lot and affected a lot of how I raced uh, this year uh, you can see on the front um, Patrick Stolp uh, he won the TT with a great time um, so he was kind of one of the favorites for this race and uh, he was putting in a lot of work too so even though he was the favorite um, he was on the front taking poles and keeping the pace up um, so great to see him doing work even though uh, you know he had the leader's jersey and, and could have just kind of sat in and drafted but uh, uh, move forward a little bit more so you can see here a little bit further on uh, we're lap three Jim Oaks from project team uh, they're the red kits uh, you can see another one uh, Ryan here in front of me uh, but Jim is on the front and he's pushing the pace and then he actually attacks right off the front and this is probably the one of the hardest attacks um, fastest we got going throughout this race other than the preem lap um, but Jim uh, really gets us up to speed we're going you know, 32 here he gets a good gap off the front um, and uh, it was really probably the first time in this race that we really got animated at all um, you can see things are getting really stretched out um, but it does ultimately come back together pretty quick but definitely a nice little added spark when no one seemed to want to do anything um, you can see there's little gaps still here and there that people are, are working on closing so um, you know got, got people to use a couple of matches which is good Then you got other guys just trying to move up. I mean, we're still we're still moving right now, 27 miles per hour. Um, people are just kind of when it gets strung out. Um, if you can um, go move faster, sometimes if it's strung out. It's 30 miles per hour, and it's very hard to move up. But um, this course, if people are going slow, it tends to bunch up and take up the entire width of the road so it's a little bit difficult to move around in the pack um, but if it's strung out but not going too fast and you can carry your speed um, that is a really good opportunity to move up you see a lot of guys um, right now are just kind of shuffling around and uh, using that to their advantage and then um, it bunches up this little section there is a small um, elevation change so uh, either it would slow down and people would use it to change position or uh, people would smash it there hard and um, it was kind of the one little attack point that you could find on this course but um, you know without much technicality to it you kind of gotta uh, find whatever you can to inflict pain on the other riders I guess here we are a couple laps later um, just to show you um, this is that section I was talking about everyone kind of hits that little um, elevation and uh, you can see we're we're popping up but I'm I'm just watching Sam I mean, you've seen him in, in some of my other videos probably um, guy right in front of me with the uh, project echelon blue uh, white blue and baby kit um, I just figured I'd jump on his wheel when he decided to to move over but uh, I mean you could definitely expect a little punchiness around that area pretty much every lap um, just to keep things lively uh, but I was okay just kind of hanging out 
drift into the back and then hopping back on uh, to get back in the draft. And then as things slow back down, uh, it's again relatively easy to move up. So um, I'm finding that that's really the best strategy when you, when you know that the field is going to stick together. Find the opportunities to move up, but then don't feel like you have to chase everything down from the front. Um, just kind of let yourself drift back and then grab on to a wheel and you're basically you know letting everybody else surge and if as long as you can get back in the draft they're going to slow down shortly after and then you can just move right back up and you don't really ever have to make quite the surge that that the other guys do that are uh, chasing that that down so um, this is start of the preem lap and kind of slows down for a second um, but you can tell everybody's kind of getting tense people are, are keeping an eye on for somebody uh, to, to go for that premium so here we are same area um, like I said uh, people are starting to pick up the pace I probably should have just jumped right on that wheel even though I had no intention of going for the preem um, so even though I'm not really left out and I know I can get back up there I'm definitely just taking more wind um, and doing more work on that acceleration than I needed to um, had I just kind of responded a little bit quicker so people picked that pace up you know we were going 400 watts but then you can see sam goes off the front and uh, i know that people are going to jump on that so i'm already picking up my pace and i think sam kind of looks back and sees that everybody's with him and then he just realizes it's not really worth it because uh, yeah it's a 50 dollar prime Cream, excuse me um, but I think his he's looking to win it so um, definitely gets the pace up I really should have closed this quicker but you can see he's, he's off the front a bit but he kind of just sits up I think and then uh, he probably won't be able to see it on the camera but I'll leave uh, Patrick Stolp the uh, uh, who was in the leader's jersey earlier because he won the TT. He's the one that actually takes the preem. So um, I know things are going to slow down a little bit here. Uh, I'm not too worried about this remaining gap. But looking back on it, yes, I was tired, but I'm carrying a lot of speed. And there is a giant gap behind us. I really should have rode through the pack not necessarily to attack them but to get them to keep the pace high because had we kept pushing it i think we probably could have broken up um this small group that were in here with the with the rest of the guys back there um and at least made it uh, a little bit easier in the end uh, just with half the field to uh Anytime you, you had a race, I mean, we're basically would only have to sprint against you know, ten less people. So um, even though, yeah, they may have been the strongest guys, um, it would be a lot less congested at the end, and uh, maybe uh, this is foreshadowing, but <laughs> maybe I could have gotten into a little bit better position um, if we were uh, racing against a smaller group. But uh, you know, that's what I'm learning. Um, Again, it's it's tough in the moment when you're uh, you're catching your breath to really urge yourself to keep going. But a counterattack um, on a preen lap is uh, usually going to be a good uh, opportunity. So we're on lap eight here. Um, this is uh, one of the few times I'm just hanging out on the back. Um, but there is an attack that goes off the front. Um, you can see a bunch of guys kind of getting off the front there, stringing things out. Um, so pace picks up, and uh, we're moving uh, 30 miles per hour. But I'm surprised, honestly, that on the back I didn't really get gapped off too much. Um, it all comes together pretty quick, um, but you would think that uh, you know I didn't even see it until 
those guys kind of rounded that corner. Um, I think people are just kind of playing games, seeing uh, how responsive people are. But uh, yeah, we, we bring it back pretty quick. So I actually used that opportunity um, to just kind of carry my speed a little, um, put in a very small effort and uh, get back to the front because I realize, you know, if people are going to start doing little attacks, I do not want to get uh, capped off the back. So moving up here, uh, I'm trying to slot in in front of uh, my teammate Devin and uh, kind of uh, just decide to make sure I'm close to the front for the rest of the race. So this is a few laps later. Um, I had been uh, kind of shuffling around between like th third and fourth wheel. Um, and I decided, I decided to follow this rider, um, whose name is Jeremy. Uh, I met him uh, after the road race. Um, but I figured, hey, why not? If, I mean, he's gonna just pull people. I'll, I'll try to get in behind him and um, I'll do some work and then I'll just uh, pull off when he gets tired but um, I don't plan on putting in a pull um, we are pretty close I think we're on like the maybe third to last lap or there's only a f there's only a few more laps yeah um, I just checked we ended up doing uh, 13 laps so I, I at this point I want to stay close to the front but I also don't really want to be doing work but you know you can see I'm, I'm not even doing really 200 watts um, as long as I'm staying pretty close behind this guy now i'm shooting up because i'm falling off but um yeah i'm content just hanging out here and um i know that everyone's on my wheel uh, my rear camera died um, on the 10th lap i think so obviously you can't see that anymore um but uh i'm trying to keep an eye on uh you know people who are looking to come around and obviously we've got kind of like two different lines of traps here. And uh, <laughs> uh, I think Devin, my, my teammate, kind of steals my wheel here. Um, and then I, I don't have anywhere to go. So I ended up kind of uh, just being in the wind. Um, and then I, I unfortunately kind of filter back a little bit after this. So we this is the second to last lap. really get into the draft so I'm doing not a ton of work but definitely more than I should be doing right now as people are preparing for the sprint um, I really shouldn't be spiking over 300 for sure and uh, kind of going back and forth there but see the right side of, of this train um, you got the IBCC guys who have been doing a lot of work um, they were super strong in the TT, so you know that they're going to be there. Patrick, who, who won the TT. Um, so that's kind of more where I want to be. I want to be on them. Um, again, I, I, at this point, don't know the rider right in front of me. But uh, I'm just kind of trusting it. Like, hey, I got to get on somebody's wheel. So um, but right now, I don't want to really be... <laughs> fighting the, the leader for a wheel either kind of just respectfully I'd, I would rather be behind him anyways um, so I believe I'm, I'm trying to get him to go up closer and I'd, I'd like to kind of slot in behind him but and second to last lap and anticipating a surge at this same section where there usually is. So yeah, now I, the plan was to slot in behind Patrick, but I've got uh, the guy on the front. His teammate is right behind Patrick, which is where he should be. It's a this good spot to be, but we're definitely fighting a little bit. Um, I saw it as, as my wheel as I was coming back. My handlebars were in front of his. Um, and but we're doing a little little pushing and shoving there. Um, nothing, nothing too crazy, but you know, definitely trying to get that wheel because I've been Short. I've been out in the wind too long. Up 
probably just let these last laps play out on here so you can see how it all unfolds. Patrick was really smart to get over there. Again, I'm just trying to get on a wheel, so I figure I'll get back on the guys who were pulling here. But at this point, they're obviously tired. They've been pulling for like basically two laps, I think, at this point. So we're going into the last lap. thinking that I'm in really good position here. But kind of get stuck a little bit. I don't want to try to get through that gap because this guy's moving over. So now I got to put in a really big effort to go around him as he was falling back and then I can't really get back into the draft. So really I should have gone right because I would have been able to stay in a draft. You can see Ryan, um, the guy in the red jersey in front of me, he was behind me and had a much easier time because uh, he was able to jump on somebody else, go to the right and stay in the draft the whole time instead of fighting around. So basically I ended up falling all the way back here and uh, know that I got to move up I'm thinking I want to try to move up on the left side but then this rider comes around and I want to get on Devin's wheel my teammate but it's just a little too congested I can't get through this gap so other people are just pushing from the outside so I figure I'll go around this guy but then he's he's kind of reaching He's trying to touch Devin, and I'm like, well, he, he's not even close enough for him to touch there. <laughs> so it's a little bit sketchy. He's just kind of going back and forth. And I talked to him the next day. He's a newer rider. It's his first year or whatever. I kind of get pushed in the grass, and it's basically the end of my race. But, um, you know, I fight till the end, and uh, I just, you know, had I been up in much better position to start, uh, could have been a much different uh, race for me, but um, hey, it's better than my crash last year, and uh, you know, it was fun. It was a fun one. But I definitely have to work on last lap positioning, and uh, oftentimes I've been on the back and can't move up. Uh, before the last lap this time I was too close to the front so that I couldn't get on draft as people started to move up so I just gotta figure out that you know medium spot I guess where you can move up effectively and uh, not be too far up too soon and uh see how that plays out in the uh, road race. I'll try to get that out in the next uh, few days if I can, but uh, it's been a busy week for me. So 